Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to my live stream. Welcome to the Sewing Summit. I'm super excited to be in this one of a kind summit. I mean, um, <laughs> the first time I encountered this, the name of this training, I was blown away because I'm like, people are thinking, you know, and if you know me well, if you know me, hi. If you don't know me, so you get to know me, right? So if you know me well, I am very huge on content production. I actually think that producing events, trainings, whether they are courses, trainings, and educational stuff is, is humanitarian, right? No matter how much you charge, you charge for it. Even if you charge $2,000 to teach people something, the fact that you thought about it, I wanted to help people makes me love, love you. And so I love the whole concept. Kudos to our coach. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So my name is Chisom Mutiriaka, aka Jenny Chisom, right? I um, have been 13 years on the grind, doing all sorts of businesses, but of course maintaining a few that have blossomed. Um, and I'm super excited because um, I have made more sales um, writing and more sales online than I have done through any other way, right? Writing is one of the things I do. I mean, I'm huge. I'm a huge video fan. I'm a video producer today. I've been writing since I can spell my name. And I love reading. I'm a voracious reader. I'm a book editor par excellence for 13 years. And I've built a whole company around it. And I've built, you know, a body of work around it. So I actually have a course where I train editors and proofreaders on, on the business of the you know the business of the business <laughs> so i can tell you for free that i know the role that writing or in this case copywriting plays anybody can write anything when i was in school i also made sure i studied my dream course which was english and literature um even though my father didn't like it but i got him to like the fact that i liked it if you know what i mean because i think that writing is one of god's gifts to the world Trust me. Now, I'm um, to discuss good copywriting for your sewing business. And I won't bore you. I'll take you straight into the practical things that have helped me over the years. I am not a fan of, you know, of theory and too much talk, right? So if there's something I know, first of all, let me know that you're watching by dropping your location in the comment section. Let me know where you're watching from. Drop your location, country, city, you know, and let's roll this i'm talking to you from uyo in nigeria yeah and i am excited to have you here so good copywriting for your sewing business i i i, I understand that people who are here are people who sew um, as a business whether you're sewing bags by the way i remember some cute leather bags that a lot a few people are doing in nigeria and i love 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 it whether you're sewing shoes where you're selling bags where you're sewing clothes where you're sewing handkerchief whatever it is that you're sewing hi well done i want to say well done because you guys are the are the point of production i've also done a production business and i can tell you but mine was food so i can tell that it is not a walk in the park well done well done well done okay now i have my note here so i'm going to be speaking um from my nose prompt from my noise point when you uh, when you heard good copyright, what came to your mind? You know, really, you know, did you research it? Did you try to say, oh, okay, what is the one copyright? And I keep hearing it everywhere, thrown around in social media. Um, yeah, let me know what you thought about what copywriting is and why do you think copywriting is different from writing in, the, in that sense? So let me know in the comment section as well. Okay, go ahead. Right? Okay, so let me start like this. Marketing is very key and copywriting is is the essence the feel of marketing if you ask me and see as a small business owner what i have come to experience is that i am the gatekeeper of my business and that means i can't leave the bulk of the marketing things like customer service phone call um email uh, responding uh, responding to emails and all that i can't leave that to just anybody who is not trained and tested and tried and a lot of people are making these mistakes and i think you shouldn't you shouldn't. Yes, I'm not saying you should work in your business and let your business crumble you. You can't scale it that way, okay? But if you're just starting out and I'm saying uh, you haven't had anyone who you have trained or you don't have an, a company you can outsource 
that you're sure of the integrity and delivery and make sure that you understand the essence of your business please don't leave the marketing of your business when i mean marketing i don't mean that people can't market for you i mean the touch point where people get to meet your business so whether it is phone call your email you know customer service um procedure you know don't leave that to chance right because at the end of the day you're the owner of this business or you're the co-owner of this business and that what that means is that integrally you're the chief marketer of your brand right nobody can market your business like you i know you have heard that you know a lot of times but that's what it is and marketing goes beyond different um, phases yeah and marketing goes beyond um, or, or goes uh, or rather it involves a lot of other things right so um no matter what you are source no matter what you do no matter how you decide to do it copywriting is something good copywriting now is something that you must pay attention to if you want to sell everybody's writing i mean also it is everybody can write in that sense as much as they can but learning how to write good copies uh is skill uh is skill i know that some find writing is more um, easier than other people so all they need is to be guided on the structure of how to make their writing come out more convincing and more you know able to sell in that sense so um your you you market in different aspects you market in your personality you know your personality tells about your business no matter how you think about it you sell using your maybe website right it's also a front burner uh, platform for your business you sell using your branding the way your logo looks your tagline your slogan your brand promise all of those things uh, your marketing uh, part of your marketing right you sell in the way you treat your prospective customers and in this case good copywriting is one of those touch points that helps you get prospective customers you also sell or market yourself in the way you treat your customers people who are already buying from you right so all of those things tell about who you are as a business owner or as a business brand right also your the policies you have in your business are all part of the things that market you or tell who you what, how your business behaves the policy you have for instance um for you know exchanging for exchanging products for instance or um like uh, refunds you know if somebody has bought something and maybe change their mind you have a policy what what your policy or how fair your customers or prospective customers think your policies are, are also part of how your brand is perceived but i miss all of this marketing above all of this directly or indirectly they all depend on good copywriting yeah so i was talking about you not leaving your business marketing to just anybody now how do you make sure that you can leave your business to you can employ someone who is a customer care person or somebody who picks the calls and you know attend to clients is when you have good copywriting in place a, a copy that tells even the person handling the phone how to what to say and how to say it it is to that details right and that is so so key so your customer um service person had ha have to learn especially in africa we overlook this kind of things your customer care person have to learn that whether their grandmother died that morning whether they are sick whether they have cramps whether you know their girlfriend broke up with them it shouldn't change the disposition of their you know their disposition in meeting clients for instance and these things have to be documented when you document them you know in a policy document it makes your your operations easier swifter so that when you employ people and they go and come when a new person comes it's easy to onboard the person right i'm trying to, to tell you the extent a good copywriting can help your business all right now um so everything about your market the mar marketing your business falls directly or indirectly um under the technique you employ for copywriting yeah now as somebody who made her first million copywriting i can tell you for free i made my first million naira not dollar now but we're getting there <laughs> Millionaire, actually, it was 1.2 million naira from copywriting. I can tell you a few things for free, right? Now, and I like the fact that this summit is actually free. If I were you, I'll take all the opportunities that this summit has presented from the 28th till today. Take all the opportunities, take all the offers, take all, make sure that you it's something that you go over, over, and over again. Make sure that these things you're hearing, you come back to hear them again. After all, Christians 
understand that faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. So hearing it again and again helps it to solidify. Okay, now um, I was saying that I made 1.2 million naira years ago from copywriting. Ask me what I wrote. Before that time, let me give you a background. Before that time, I have been blogging for years. Before that time, I've been blogging. By this year, I've been blogging for 13 years. Even though I'm, a, I'm in a bit of a blogging break right now because I'm building my video portfolio on YouTube. Now, years ago, I was paid 1.2 million dollars to write what? Ask me. Not a blog post. Not a book. <laughs> not ghost writing. I was paid 1.2 million dollars and please... Okay, I'll come to that. Before somebody say, oh, where did they see these people that pay them this amount of money? Or oh, it's too small. However, which part of the divide you belong? What I wrote was website content and company profile. Yeah? So I have the company decide on their vision, mission, uh, objectives, and you know, all of those you know, sweet spots, right? And then help them to now write a proper succinct um, you, um, website content that they were using for you know face forward to you know to get their stakeholders on board and their customers on board yeah and then somebody will say oh how do they get this kind of jobs you have to charge your worth or what you think you're worth right nobody's going to come up front and say oh okay i'm offering you 1.2 million dollars please help me write a website of four pages website content of all pages i know that these things also have you know guidelines the way you write a website content is marketing is copywriting at its best the way you think about your logo i i attended business school on scholarship during uh former our former president jonathan's tenure where they paid a few about 100 entrepreneurs to attend the lagos business school at that time i was in the abuja center and i remember in our operations class the day they were teaching us about branding Thing, yeah branding and how to create a good slogan you know for your for your brand a lot of people were struggling with it but it was something i had created before i came because i started my business two years before that time this was in 2011 i started my business in 2009 and there was something that was that i had already known before then there i could never choose a name whether it is for to raise a company or a brand that will become a cliche i always have a knack for you know uniqueness when it comes to name naming branding so i wasn't you know i wasn't agitating when it was my turn i simply told them what my logo was right and the teacher and lecturer was blown away now what was it the name of my company is logos audibles that is my content editing and um, proofreading company we also do also publish and advertise as well so our slogan here today and then is we amplify your thoughts correctly and the man was so blown away like oh how did you come up with it because he had just taught us how to structure it and all of that and people were struggling to write their own in class but i relaxed because i knew i already had it so copywriting is a lot of things but it is exactly how you show up and what you say and me and how people perceive you now somebody might ask what's copywriting have i even checked this thing out i need to check this thing out for me copywriting is purely writing to advertise and get sales in Copywriting is what? That kind of writing you do to advertise something and get people to buy. Simple, right? So you can write anything. You can write fiction, you can write stories, you can write stories that, you know, to make people happy. Every story has an aim, just like you watch movies. Every movie has something didactic that they are trying to pass across. So the same way, copywriting has to make sales. First of all, it has to market you have to let people know about an offer a product or something you have sown in this case right so the platform you choose for your business irrespective it doesn't matter copywriting is still key whether you decide to use instagram facebook billboard um traditional billboard you know um <laughs> whatever it is you choose to do it doesn't matter all matters is how people understand what it is that you're selling have you seen people trying their best to sell you something but you still can't understand what they are selling a lot of people do it in, in trying to appear you know um, like they have a lot of words like they are motivational all kinds of things people say <laughs> people keep repeating themselves saying nothing so the language of use and all of that come to play copywriting even helps you sell in videos 
see, uh, the power of copywriting is so key. There's an element of, of what I do that has blown my mind over the years. In the days of Blackberry Messenger, before I come back to my thoughts, <laughs> I was one of those people who my pin and everything was to market you, get you to buy something from me. I mastered it. I started mastering it from there. When it got to WhatsApp, WhatsApp is one tool I have used to sell more than, you know, every other platform. More than Facebook, more than, you know, all other platforms. And copywriting is key. Copywriting is key. Copywriting is the reason you can get people to ask or make inquiries about what they might not even have been thinking about, but they just realize that they need because of the way you put it. Copywriting helps you make good videos, even though it's the writing. Makes it, it makes you, it helps you get good videos. It helps you even decide on good images. It transcends to that. So when you get your copies right, you have, you, you can repurpose your content across board. So if you've written something that is a fantastic, that can sell, that, can, that is convincing enough to sell, you can also use that to make a video. You can use that to design, to decide on an image concept and all of them will help you sell right now since we are talking about good copywriting let me start with what bad copywriting is about in my experience you are you have written a bad copy when you're saying what people don't understand you're using big grammar you are not you know you're just verbose people are even tired who are you what exactly are you selling people are listening to hear and get it and in the first one minute, three seconds, like they say, three seconds is, is how you can even return attention. In the first three seconds, they are still struggling. One minute after, they are still reading this thing and trying to understand what this person means. Oh my God. I just remembered one of the authors. He's a Nigerian author, but he's old now. He's a Nigerian author that we read during my days in the university. I knew how I didn't like his, one of his works because what is with all that big grammar? I could understand a very small book. But I couldn't read it from cover to the end. Me like this, that is a, a voracious reader. Me like this, that can act for Africa. Me that can, you know, I just couldn't understand it. For me, I think it's bad writing, even though he's a professor and all of those good stuff. Well, so I think that in marketing, don't bring that, those tones in marketing. Don't be saying things, writing things that people are reading and they can't get to the point. Be specific. So your copy is bad when you are not specific. You're just saying so many things at the same time trying to talk about so many products or different things at the same time. Mm -mm. That's bad copy. That's a bad copy. You have a bad copy also when after people have read what you have written, they still have questions on their minds like, oh, who knows whether I can paint or mentally or rather good English or better English. Who knows if I can pay in installments? Who knows whether they have another color of this shirt apart from green? You know, those kind of things. Your copy should have all of those. So when you're writing a copy, make sure that you think of all the likely doubts and observations and preferences that your ideal reader might have, ideal buyer in this case, might have. You have sold this fantastic, you know, frock or, you know, or baby nursery stuff. Do you have different colors? Let your copy communicate it. Do you sell in batches of 12 and 6? Let your copy communicate it. That's the clue, right? So your copy is bad when it doesn't address this. A co your copy is also bad when there is no storyline. You are just saying, oh, come and buy from me, attend my conference. Nobody looking for conference to attend. Hmm? People want to solve their problems. So when you, when you think of a story in your life, in other people's lives, or from a movie, or you have read from a book, or you have imagined that is true to life, that you can use to explain the benefit of this summit you want to do, then you're talking, then you're writing copy, then you're writing a good copy, right? So your story, your copy must have a storyline. Mm, it must. Then also the next one, a copy is bad when it sounds salesy. And that's why you need a story angle to it. If it just sounds, oh, I've written this fantastic book and you should buy it, it's 2000 Naira. Did anybody wake up that day thinking of, of buying a book? But people will buy even if they didn't budget it when they know that you that that book has their interest at heart and you've written it in a way that cuts to their emotion and that goes to my next point a copy is bad when it, uh, it doesn't touch on the emotion of people who are reading it it doesn't elicit anger 
and they resolve to change something. It doesn't elicit, oh, love. It doesn't elicit any of those, oh my God, I need to do this now. I need to buy this. I really need this. I didn't know it was this bad. I can't keep hiding this problem. I need to get the solution this person is offering. It doesn't elicit all of that. Forget it. That's a bad copy. A copy is bad when it doesn't anchor on keywords. Oh, the things you're selling, what, you're, what you have sown you want to sell. What are the key things that you want your reader to live with? Is it um, leather or snake leather bag? Then you have to emphasize it. You know, don't make it too much anyway. You have to emphasize it when you're talking. What are the key benefits of that thing you have sown? Oh, you know, it helps you to be well covered while nursing in public. So while nursing in public, you know, you have to drum it in. You, you get what I mean? So let your copy, let your copy um, I'll amplify the keywords. Your copy is bad when it is too wordy, too long. People are reading and they can't get to the point. They are still reading and it's like, oh my gosh. Yes, there's a place for long, long forms. There's a place for short forms. And there's a place for the combination of both. You know, of course, in this case, you already know if you're going to be a good copywriter, you're not going to write today and not write again for one month. You, you're not going to write about your business today. Then the next one month, you're just sharing links about prayer or join early morning prayer or you're, or you're just sharing links about, you know, about a comedy somebody performed. You have to be consistent and you have to cleanse your platform from all of those things and focus. Let people know you as a sewing preneur. Let them know exactly what it is that you do, right? So a copy that is too long, too wordy, you know, repeating the same things, repeating the same things. Long and wordy are even two different things. So you say the same thing in different ways and it gets boring. It gets boring. A copy is bad when it doesn't tell you the benefits. It's telling you how the thing is, how long it is, how long it takes you, how this and that, without telling you that if you don't get this now, you know, that eczema might remain in your body and Christmas is coming. You want to slay. It instead is telling you this thing is made from you know concomitant profane it is made from this and this you should go and research and see that that ingredient is very very good for removing acne mm -mm. tell somebody about the fact that you want to step out and be the center of attraction without your skin distracting people from your real beauty then you're talking you know what i mean your copy has to tell the benefit of using it or of buying it you don't, nobody wants to know, oh, this, that, 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 all those ones they can find out later. Yeah? A copy is bad when you have not written it. <laughs> I needed to add this one. You decide not to write it. It's bad. Nobody knows what you do. You know, you're flying blind. You're like a pilot flying in La La Land. You don't know where you're headed to. So your copy must be authentic. It must be humane. It must appeal to emotion. It must be straight to the point. It must not be selling people stuff. Buy, buy, buy. If I don't use that word, buy. Yeah, if you can. Look for synonyms. Hmm. Look for synonyms. Like grab this now. You need this now. Get yours here. You know, something very, 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 that will make people feel like, oh, I like, want to get my Reserve your seat here. Yeah. So, as a blogger of 13 years, I have also... Um, mastered a few things and how to make my life easy generally so usually people say oh how, so how do you write a good copy how do you write a good? i will tell you i'll give you a template um is a step is a 10 step if you remember them of course you will only remember them when you practice writing with that format that way you can never get it wrong so all you have to do is to change the scenarios change the stories change the product change the images and then you keep having fantastic copy so are you ready to take my template <laughs> let's go and if you get this template right all the time, even to make a video, like a one minute video selling what you're doing, it will be easy. Even though that have a slightly different format because it has to be brief, but it, you can still figure it out. And, and here's the answer questions if you have later on. So I, like I said, I like to make my life easy. So number one, I'm going to give you a 10 step. Number one, write down. Number one, number one thing to do is to think of an idea or a story. Just think of a story. So something has happened to you when you were fetching water with your sister back in the 80s that is so hilarious. Think of, you know, think of a story. Think of an idea. 
think of, oh, I don't know why Igbo men are so, you know, this. They don't like to exercise and they don't, you know, they don't satisfy their wives. You know, just think of an idea or a story. Think about it and keep it in the image of your mind. Please write it down so you don't forget. Write it down. Remember, when you get into the creative process, these are step-by-step -step things I'm giving you to do so that you can come up with a good copy all the time. Number two, so you've thought about an idea or a story. Number one, you've written a, something to remind you of that story, okay? Or an idea. Number two, think of how that story relates to something that you have sown recently, something you have made. Think about it. There is always a way. Think. Think as I'm talking. Now, close. So, whether close your eyes, open your eyes. Think of a story, something hilarious, something that is sober, something that you know that is fun, something you haven't shared that you think will help people. Think of an idea or a story. Put that that story in your mind or idea in your mind and write it down. Then now, think of how that story relates to something you have made that you want to sell, something you have sold. Fine. Think of that story, think of that thing, think of that story, think of that. There's always a way to relate. Note it down. Then let's get into the real work. Number three, which is step three. Write down a creative title that will call attention for people to read this copy. That, you know, you know the idea that you want to pass now. You know the product that you have sown, something you have made that relates to that story. So find a title that if you use it to, to get it that, will, that you can use to get people to make sure they read this story about this very fun thing that you want to talk about. Think of a creative title. And at this point, this is step four. Uh, or rather, this is step three. Step four now, next thing is think of a product you have made that explains that idea or story you have best is it a frock you have made is it a handbag is it a shoe for men is it a back to school shoe you have made what is it think about it and then conceptualize that project image that means think about how you can you are going to snap the picture of that um that thing you have sewn after this summit think of how you're going to snap it how it is going to be do you understand what i mean so conceptualize a product image, that's number four. And at this point, it can be vice versa. Some people also, like somebody like me, sometimes I start the process from number four. I start with thinking of a product or something I want to sell. Then that product, I'll think of a story that relates to it. You, you get what I mean? So number four can be your number one, then you follow up that way. But don't miss the track. Number four, then number five. Think of a goal, something you want to achieve by the time you're done writing this copy. Do you want more people to know about your business? Number one. Two, do you want more people to engage with your business and ask, make inquiries, call you, make orders? Number two. Or number three, do you want people to actually buy? What is your aim? Do you want people to buy immediately you post? Because you know why this is important? It will, it will define how you're going to put your copy and how you're going to write it and how you're going to call to action. Very important. That's number five. Number six, go ahead right now and write that story or that idea you have thought about. Write it down now in simple terms. What happened? Just like, like, like a short story, right? Try to be as descriptive as you can, but short story. It doesn't have to be anything more than 250 words, please. Just write a short story as an intro. It can be 100 words, it can be 50 words, but write a good story. Try to share that experience you've thought about or that idea as a story to start with, right? That's number six. Number seven, when you're done writing that story, now tell how that story relates to something you have made, something you have sown, right? What you bring to the table to either, you know, um, get to solve that problem that you have painted in the scenario of the story or, you know, or how your product complements that story. That's number seven. Number eight, think of a bonus you can add. You know, if somebody walks into your, your if the person walked into a physical store and, you know, wants to buy that same thing, it's possible you offer the person sweets as well or bottled water or something. So this is online. So think of something you can give as an add-on for free for anybody who takes this solution 
this offer you have brought in after telling the story. That story has painted an image in their mind, has created a hunger in their mind, and now you have offered them what you have made that will suit, you know, or prevent something that the scenario of the story painted, depending on what the situation is. Give a bonus as an add-on to that product you, or that thing you have sown that, they, that you want them to buy. Right? That's number eight. Now, in number nine, go ahead and let them know that they have to take fast action. Ask them to take fast action. But how do you do that? You create a scarcity. Oh, I'm making this available for just 48 hours. Or um, I have only one offer left. Or I have only one frock left. So your image can even be holding that frock up. Oh, who wants this? It's going. You're going to find that more than one person is going to ask for it. And you're still going to sell it and sell other ones you have. Yeah? So, number nine is create a scarcity or that there's no time so that people can take fast action. Okay? Then number ten, call to action. Tell them exactly what you want them to do. You want them to call you... You want them to click a link and leave their names. You want them to get into your email list. You want them to buy by, you know, by putting up a link where they can get straight to your payment gateway. All this depends on your goal that you have decided in, you know, after number four. So if your goal is awareness, you could be asking them to share more, send it to their friends and all of that. If your goal is to get more people who are interested in, in buying that thing, that is leads, tell them to engage, drop a comment, what do they think, inbox you, you know, click a link and join your email list or a waiting list to get it, all of those. Very important. It means that you have already must have prepared your call to action trigger. Prepare it ready. So if you need people to join your email list or a wait list, you must have prepared your email list um, link that you're going to share in your call to action at the end of it. Right? Then if your aim is to get people to, con to convert entirely, most times it's better you are, you are writing this to people who already have bought from you or know you. So maybe if you're already, if you're sending this copy in your email list or people who already have engaged with you, they have bought from you before, then it's easy to convert them to buy this other thing you're selling by saying, please go right here and pay for your own right now with this amount and give you a discount to do this because you have been with me. You know what I mean? That's number 10. That's my 10, you know, my 10 step template to help you write a good copy. Does that make sense? Did you get all the points? Did somebody get all the points? Write it in the comment section so that anybody who didn't get it can get it. Or you rewind this video and watch. Okay? Now, what, if you want to make a good copy, you must write clearly. Please don't use big, big words. Don't use tenses that are not matching. You know, when something is in the plural, when something is in the plural, the verb has to be plural. So, people are... Oh, okay, let me put like the people buy. A person buys. You get what I mean? And, you know, let me not get into editing club, but you know, um, if you're using English to communicate, please make sure that you can research certain things. Even your laptop, when you're typing or your phone, sometimes they auto-correct you. Look at what is, is, the, is the correct thing. You know, it's not in all cases that it's correct. And please make adjustment to those things that is flags. It's like those ones that are in red and in blue. Please make sure you look at it and... And, and, and correct it. Don't send any writing out until you have read it again. So if you write a copy now, leave it after a while, do other things later in the evening or tomorrow morning, read it again and again, you are going to see some things to highlight. The last way that you're going to make sure that your writing comes out flawless is that you read it aloud to yourself, right? Before you post, read it aloud. Okay, um, um, I, I, I was walking down the stream that day when a snake you know, came out. I wish I had this. I, I, looking back now, I wish I had boots on. I mean, today, I have been able to go ahead to make boots that you can wear to anywhere, to any event, to prevent all of those kind of incidences that can ruin our childhood. You know, I make the best boots in Africa and at a very affordable luxury price. Now, if you want to get it, you can't get it except you order. And that's why I'm making you the offer first. Blah, 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 blah. Click here to join my waiting date or click here to get it right now. We have only two colors in red, you know, whatever, you know, I'm just saying, you know. So read it out to yourself. You might also see one or two grammatical errors or, or typo errors and correct them before you post. Now, this process might look like, oh my God, all of this and I'm going to do. But by the time you keep doing it, it becomes easy peasy. 
easy peasy like when you want to also write a good copy make sure that you answer all the likely questions that or doubts all the doubts that will come in, in in somebody's mind when they are reading it think about those doubts ahead of the person and answer them right so that's why we, we have things like frequently ask questions when you see some courses or some like some coaches do you see them answer questions oh so can i pay after 13th or can i pay what happens if i'm not able to attend and i pay what happens with this so all of those things address them in the body of the copy right in a very clear way also ensure that the image you want to use to communicate that thing is apt like it tells that story like to the point right title your make your title like a pro a professional title like a pro Right? Don't be afraid to use controversial stuff as long as it's related. If you go through my Facebook page, you, 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 you have a clue about a few things I, I caption and the way my mind works. Right? So, write. When you're writing, focus on one person. I think this is very important. Focus on one person. So, you might have this nursery. I, I don't know why I keep using this example. You might have this nursery you know, cover you have made that women use to cover themselves while breastfeeding in public you have made now today you decide that your copy will be directed to the mothers themselves who who, who nurse in public right have one mother who is who nurses in public on your mind when you're writing that copy on another post for the next day you can focus on fathers who have you know young children who have newborns you know so you know how to the language will change the way you address it will change you know the way you want them to buy will change because you're going to appeal more to loving your wife enough to want to buy it for instance you know what i mean so always think of one person that that copy will activate or trigger to sell to buy rather and write like you're talking to the person yeah write one person for time okay so i'm going to take your questions here you know just drop them in comments i think the organizer will let us know but i'm here for a few more minutes to answer any questions you may have right and then we'll take it from there i have really enjoyed you know sharing with you what i know about copywriting and of course i know the real job is in actual writing which is something you should go and do actually write and i think i'll make an offer to maybe five people who are willing to write copies and then I can help them, I can help, I can read the copies and, you know, make a few adjustments for them, for them here and there. Yeah, that's an offer I'm giving to, for the first five people that email me at chisomutibiaka at gmail.com, I will give you um, a session where we can go through your copy together and okay it and then you can post. Incidentally, I'm off Facebook for now, I'm off social media for now, I'm only on my YouTube channel and my email. So if you're looking for me on Facebook, Instagram, you might not get me, but I'm on WhatsApp and on my YouTube channels, channels, right? So yeah, send me an email. The first five I get, I'm gonna work on them and work with you to make sure you have a great copy. Okay, now if you don't know, I have online courses that I have sold, most unlikely online courses that I have sold. I produce events as well. I have events for, um, for single people who are above 35 and waiting to get married. And I have sold all of these things. I have sold bloggers events all by using good copywriting. I have sold trainings on different aspects of life, training, um, 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 personal development. Um, I've sold books, ebooks, I've sold webinars, I've sold all kinds of things by just writing. Okay, and I already told you how that it made me my first million on copywriting, right? So don't sleep on this offer. Thank you so much for listening, and I'm going to be waiting for you in the comment section to answer your questions and, of course, get your emails if you want me to help you. Thank you so much, everyone. Talk to you soon.